There's a perfume of a million flowers clinging to the heart of old Hawaii. We got up at 5.30 in the morning and hit Reveille and got out and clean sweep down to the decks. It was Sunday morning. We'd no holy stoning and no, no painting and scraping, but uh, clean sweep down and then chow call and we went to chow and we ate in number six Kate's Mate, which were where we slept. And, and I picked up some oranges to take off. Some of the sailors didn't pick up and to take to my buddy in sick bay. And, Singing me a song. Anyway, I walked back to my locker in the bakery passageway and got something, and I went back out on the forecastle deck and the port side, and some sailors were hollering and pointing towards Ford Island, so I went to have a look, and about that time, one of the planes made a turn, and we could see the uh, big orange wing spots, and right away I knew it was Japanese. And we interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. The attack also was made on all naval and military activities on the principal island of Oahu. I started from my battle station, which was what they called Sky Control Platform, it was about seven decks up on the foremost. I was actually at my battle station before the general quarter sounded, but well, they started bombing runs and whatever, and they were dive bombing us, and they were torpedo bombing us from uh, IA landing and over toward the sub base coming in. And we were right in direct line with West Virginia and Oklahoma. And so we started firing at the high altitude bombers. And, the, and we could see our shells bursting before they would, got to the planes. So they, we caught a couple of bombs on the after deck of the Arizona, and one bounced off the top of one of the number four turret, I think. And, went in the water and one went clear through the, the after hull there. And uh, then we caught the big bomb right up, right behind uh, number two turret on the starboard side, right into the magazines and a million pounds of ammunition exploded. That just, that shook the ship like it was just a, a dogwood shake a rat or something. It was just a tremendous explosion. And it blowed like 120 foot of the bow of the ship for near clear off. Blowed number one turret up in the air and it came back down. It's still there to this day. We were trying to just self-preservation there because we were getting burned all to hell. We knew that we were trying to just move around inside the director. We had a little protection there because it, we were inside, but it was just so hot and whatever, just terrible. And uh, after the fire kind of went down and the sea breeze blew the smoke and stuff away while we were, got out on the deck and, and the deck was just so hot you couldn't hardly stand on it and and we couldn't sit down and we couldn't do anything. We, we were trying to get a way to get off of there and noticed a gentleman on the <coughs> vessel on the after deck and got his attention and uh, he threw us a heaving line, which is a lead line on a smaller, uh, smaller line and uh, Tied off a heavier line, we pulled it across and tied it off on the Arizona and proceeded to go hand over hand across that line. There was only six of us went across that line, I think. But they finally got us in a 
shore boat and took us to the dock and uh, took us in an open air trek to the hospital, which was a terrible mess. So many casualties there that you couldn't even imagine. And you couldn't imagine the turmoil. They all done their jobs, I tell you. And they saved a lot of lives. I'd like to go and pay my respects. And I look at the, the room there where all the names are and think about a lot of pictures that come into my mind of my shipmates and whatever. And Say a little prayer for him and thank the God that I'm still here. <laughs>